Hi, I'm Gio Herrera. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel, Gio Zavaya How To. I recently completed an Avaya Oral upgrade from 6.2 to 7.13 and I want to share my experience with you. The entire project took about 6 months to complete from researching, documenting, performing test deployment to a final cutover. I put together this video to show you what I've learned and help you prepare for your Avaya Oral upgrade. Let's go ahead and get started. The 2 platform was hosted on a 100% appliance environment across three data centers, supporting a 14,000 station environment with a CM core duplex, a simplex ESS, four LSPs, 115 media gateways, four port networks, voicemail systems, an ACD utilizing an AES server, and an E911 system. With our Aura 7 upgrade, we took the opportunity to virtualize our core infrastructure and we were able to reduce our hardware footprint from three data centers to two and replace our simplex ESS with a virtual duplex ESS. In this presentation, we're going to review an Aura 7.13 deployment with the following systems. CM duplex, LSPs running on S8300E, media gateways, System Manager and Session Managers, WebLM via System Manager, AES Server, and Utility, utility Server. The preparation items that we're going to be reviewing are VMware VLAN requirements, licensing, number of IP addresses, VMware resources, firmware, certificates, and upgrade order. Avaya VMware VLAN requirements. When you virtualize your environment, Avaya requires a minimum of four VLANs. VLAN 1, a management interface VLAN. This is where you will put your CMIP, your AES, your utility server, your system manager, and your session manager management IP address. Next, you will need a non routable VLAN for your CM duplex duplication link. CM uses this link to monitor its heartbeat and to keep its database sync between the active and standby server. The third VLAN you will need is your Session Manager Security Module SIP traffic. Avaya recommends to separate your management traffic with your SIP traffic. The final VLAN you will need is your Public Facing Interface VLAN and this will be for your SAL or any other public facing system you might have in your environment. These are the four minimum VLANs you will need for your VMware environment, so make sure to work with your VMware and network teams to ensure you have these items pre-configured before you start your OVA deployments. Next, we move on to our Avaya Aura 7 license overview. In order to acquire the licenses, you will need to work with your Avaya account manager or your business partner. If you're not familiar working with Avaya PLDS or GRT, you might want to pay your business partner to take care of this part of the upgrade. From my recent and past personal experiences, it's better to work with a business partner on licensing items than working directly with Avaya. Avaya is great at providing support, but when it comes to licensing, it just seems that the business partners have more dedicated resources to deal with the nuances of PLDS. If you will be taking on this task, I will be creating a video on how to work with PLDS and GRT. If you're not, this will be a good overview for you to understand. CM78 License If you have Upgrade Advantage support as part of your maintenance, a new license will not be generated. You will have the ability to upgrade your CM6 licenses via PLDS. However, you will need to acquire the CM78 entitlements. Note. During the implementation phase, I advise you upgrade one or two station licenses and install them on your System Manager WebLM to license your newly deployed CM. This will license your CM and get rid of the 30-day grace period message you will receive during every login. CM78 Duplex Entitlement this will activate the entitlement to be able to download the software. In addition, it will allow you to perform an end-to-end -end registration via Avaya Global Registration Tool, or GRT. The entitlement will be associated with the sole tool it was issued to, and via GRT, you will be able to generate an SEID and complete the onboarding to be able to add your new system to SAL. Next, your S8300E Utility Server. When the licenses get generated, two product IDs will be generated. 
One is the 397514, which will be your license and entitlement for your utility server. And two, 381276 will be your AVP server license and entitlement. Please note, the utility server license can be used with the S8300 or in a customer provided VMware environment. In our environment, we have a pretty robust network running Firebird to most locations. So it made sense to deploy a centralized utility server in our VMware environment. However, I have worked in environments where we had carrier MPLS circuits with a limited amount of bandwidth. And in those types of scenarios, it made more sense to have local utility servers to perform firmware updates. For System Manager, two product IDs will be generated. RA389637, this is the system manager base license and RA380228. This license allows you to install system manager on a virtual server. For the session manager licenses, it's very important to activate the correct licenses because without a valid license, you will not be able to add an ASM to system manager. When ASM licenses are generated, you will see quite a few product IDs and PLDS but the ones that allow you to add session managers in System Manager are the following two, RA397947 and RA397950. Once again, without a license loaded in WebLM, you will not be able to add a session manager to your System Manager. For the AES server, AES will require one license, RA380294 to allow you to install your server in a virtualized environment. Please note your TSAPI or DMCC licenses, those will need to be upgraded via PLDS. So make sure you have access to PLDS or once again, if, uh, if you're not comfortable in PLDS, make sure your business partner does this part for you. For device services, one product ID will be generated under ASM BSM, and this is only for the entitlement part of it. According to Avaya, device services will not need a license file like the other products. I have not implemented device services yet. I have a couple of other implementations that are more pressing, but, uh, but, when, uh, but I will be installing device services soon, and I will be sure to document and share that process with you. As I mentioned before, I will be creating videos on how to use PLDS to activate your licenses, upgrade your licenses, and rehost your licenses from one WebLM to another. In addition, I will also show you how to perform an end-to-end -end registration in GRT so that you can register your product and be able to load your product to sell. One last important note, when you work with Avaya or your business partner on getting new licenses, communicate with them to ensure that they load your new licenses and entitlements on your correct so to or else you'll have to work on correcting it post implementation or prior depending on how pressing your uh, upgrade is. Moving on to Avaya Aura 7 IP addresses. For communication manager duplex you will require four IP addresses. One IP address for the active server, one IP address for your standby server, one non-routable IP address for the duplication link, and one IP address for your processor Ethernet. For the S8300E LSP servers, you will require two IP addresses, one IP address for your AVP, one IP address for CM. This assumes you will not deploy local, a local utility server. If you install a local utility server, make sure to reserve an extra IP address for the utility server. For system manager, you're going to need one IP address. And for session manager, you will require two IP addresses, one for the management server and one for the session manager security module. The utility server will require one IP address and the AES server will require one IP address as well. The Communication Manager VMware Resources. I put together a table for the Communication Manager VMware Resources. You can also get this from the Avaya's deployment documentation. For CM, evaluate your infrastructure and choose the right server configuration based on how large your infrastructure is. 
In our environment, we decided to deploy a CM duplex server. Based on our user count, a high capacity deployment did not make sense for us. For our LSPs, we purchased new S8300E servers. We could have used the S8300Ds, but they were quite old and we decided that it was time to refresh them. System Manager VMware Resources. When you deploy the System Manager OVA, you have three profiles to choose from, and each profile uses a different number of resources. Once again, evaluate your infrastructure to see which deployment will work best in your environment. In our environment, we decided to deploy Profile 1 because it met our requirements for the near future. Session Manager VMware Resources. With Session Manager, you have five profiles to choose from. Evaluate your infrastructure to see which deployment will work best in your environment. If you choose Profile 5, make sure you really need it because it consumes a lot of resources. For our infrastructure, we chose Profile 1 because we are not utilizing that many SIP resources and based on our roadmap, these capacities should be enough till the next upgrade. In addition, deleting an ASM instance in VMware and redeploying a new one is fairly simple. If you find yourself underutilizing or needing more resources, you can always change the profile by reinstalling ASM. AES VMware Resources. For AES Resources, same advice. Decide which profile will, best, will work best for your environment. We decided to deploy Profile 3 mainly because it's not that bandwidth intensive and we had more than enough resources to allocate to it. Utility Server VMware Resources. There's only one profile to choose from, so it's pretty straightforward. Next is Avaya Aura 7 Certificate Overview Lite. I call this Certificate Overview Lite because there's a lot to cover on this topic, and it really deserves its own segment. I will create a video to go over what I've learned and to show you how to create certificates for your implementation using System Manager as your Certificate Authority for Communication Manager, LSPs, Media Gateways, ASM, and AES servers. For now, in the Via Aura platform, certificates are used to provide identity and privacy in TLS-based communications. Avaya demo SIP certificates were previously provided as default certs across Avaya products to provide out-of-the-box support for TLS communication. In Avaya Aura 7 platform, Avaya demo certs are no longer provided because the demo certs were non-unique, enabling them on secure. Note, you may, be, you're, you may enable demo certs if you must, but it's not advisable. Customers must now adopt a new certificate strategy in order to secure their environment. There are three major certificate strategies. Evaluate your infrastructure and choose the right strategy for your company. Strategy number one, System Manager Self-Signed Certificate Authority. This is the strategy that we chose for our environment. Strategy number two, Enterprise Private CA. And strategy number three, combinations of one and two, enterprise CA using system manager as a sub CA. For an in-depth TLS and certificate management overview for Avaya Aura, you can download a PowerPoint presentation via the link below. Avaya put together a great presentation explaining the process. Avaya Aura 7 firmware patches overview. I didn't post firmware versions on this presentation because Avaya puts out new files regularly. However, I will show you which software versions I will install when I post the installation how-to videos. One of the first things you'll want to do to get your environment ready for an upgrade is to install the latest firmware on your media gateways and peripheral boards such as T1s, analog cards, valve boards, etc. To download the latest firmware, go to support.avaya.com and search for the latest TN circuit pack and you'll see it come up. You can also Google it and get a quick link. When you're ready to deploy any system software, you'll want to check that you are downloading the latest software or patches by searching under support.avaya.com forward slash downloads. Please know that I will be creating videos for each product line that we've discussed in this segment to show you what the implementation process looks like. Finally, the Avaya upgrade order. Note, before upgrading, make sure you have checked Avaya compatibilities matrix 
to ensure the new systems are compatible with some of your older systems. Avaya compatibility matrix can be found under support.avaya.com, diagnostics and tools lookup, reporting and product compatibility, product compatibility matrix. First, you will want to upgrade all of your IP endpoints, such as IP and SIP phones. Next, you want to upgrade System Manager. Once you complete the System Manager upgrade, you can continue to upgrade your Session Managers. Please note that you do not want to upgrade your Session Managers first because you will not be able to register it to System Manager. System Manager needs to be at the same version of Session Manager or higher in order to be able to successfully register a Session Manager. Next, you'll want to upgrade the firmware on all your media gateways and once that is completed, you can move on to upgrade all of your media modules. Once you're done with your Avaya, Avaya Media Gateways and Media Modules, you can proceed to upgrade your AES server, then your LSPs, and then your ESS servers. Finally, you are ready to upgrade your core. Once again, I will be creating a video for each product listed on this list, and I will be walking you through the upgrade process. If you found this video useful, please hit subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notified as soon as I post the latest upgrade videos. Thanks for watching.